Okay, and welcome to the Amplifier Adventure 2. And now I didn't just do a rude gesture at the camera. That was the other way around. But anyway, I'm going to build another amplifier soon. Now, there's nothing wrong with my old amplifier. I just thought this would be a neat little project and, you know, I'd make a series of videos about it. Now, this is a prototype that I've designed and built using some spare parts I have lying around. And this is the schematic of that amplifier. It's based on a schematic I saw on a YouTube video, and unfortunately I um, cannot point you to that video anymore because the, that account closed, but if we take a look at the original circuit, now in this original circuit in this video, he used two 2N3055 transistors as the output transistors, which I think is a little bit overkill for a circuit like this. And for the driver stage, he used a BD139, a BD140, and a BC548. Now, why he used power transistors on this part, I have absolutely no idea, because there was absolutely no need for that, and they were even on a heatsink. So really, I don't know why he did that, because these two transistors just do not get enough current to get hot. Now, if we go back to my design, we can see what changes I made. Firstly, I put two resistors here between the two output transistors, and that seriously lowers the quiescent current. And I've used two resistors because if I connect a meter here, I can see if the circuit is biased properly, and if it's biased properly, the meter will read half the voltage of the power supply, so I'll know it's biased properly, and the bias is adjusted by this resistor here, which was also in the original schematic. You can see that I've taken out that little resistor and that capacitor here, because there was really no need for that. You can see the speaker is connected to the two output transistors by these two capacitors here. I could also connect it here, but um, I think it's more effective to connect it there. And you can also see that I've used low power transistors and smaller transistors for the output transistors. And even though in the um, prototype these aren't the exact transistors I've used, when I build the real thing, these are the transistors I'm going to use, and it should work. So, I've ordered some parts, I'm just waiting for them to arrive, and when they get here, we'll see where it goes. But for now, let's take a look or a listen to the prototype in action. Now, I had no idea how sensitive this thing was going to be. I powered it up and connected it to my tape recorder and pressed play, and it did nothing short of blowing me across the room. It was just so loud, but... I'm going to give you a little demonstration of it now. I've since then turned the volume down. And to power it up, all I have to do is touch this transistor here with this probe on the meter, because the power supply is going through that. You might be able to hear a little bit of a buzz from the speaker. Hold the microphone up to it. might be able to hear that. You need to get some better audio cables. But now I'll just start the tape playing. So, as you probably can tell, that's working pretty good. And I'm happy with the quiescent current, or the idle current, depending on what you want to call it. Only 25 milliamps, so that's good. And this thing is biased properly. Just power it on again, and take a vid voltage reading here. You can see we've got 6.03 volts. So, it's looking good. Well, okay, it looks like a total mess of wires, but the idea is looking good. Now all I have to do is build the real one.